It was a Sunday afternoon when I got a text asking if I was nearby and if I could go pick him up. Someone had just posted a photo of him on Facebook. And as it turned out, I was nearby. So I picked up a box and drove there. I parked the car and there he was on the sidewalk with a bunch of people around trying to figure out what to do, how to approach him. He looked worse than that Facebook photo. It almost didn't look like something living. Probably two-thirds of that mass was just matted hair together with dirt, feces, urine, mud and who knows what else. One-third of it was a dog. Somewhere under all that there was actually a dog. According to the neighbors, he used to live with his elderly owner in an apartment right there on that street. She had probably been unable to care for him for months, maybe even years, and when she died, whoever was responsible for her simply took the dog downstairs, left him in the pavement and cleared the apartment. <laughs> Simple as that. We placed him in the bottom half of the box, put him in the car and drove off. From that moment and for the next 20 hours that mass would not move, making it even more difficult for me to realize that it was in fact something alive. I drove home, I parked the car, I took him out, got him in the lift, took him upstairs and put him in the spare bathroom, as he was in that half box. And the rest of the day passed, so did the night, and that mass didn't move, didn't make a sound, it didn't react. I couldn't tell if he was asleep or not, but I got some canned food, placed it in my hand next to what I guess was the mouth and a little tongue came out and licked my hand. He ate and drank this way. So whoever he was, this life that he had, he was trying to preserve it. And that was fascinating. None of my two dogs or three cats approached that spare bathroom. They wouldn't even walk past it. That's how indescribably horrible the smell was. I've never smelled anything like it. I never want to ever again. The how can you live with yourself phrase got a whole new meaning that day. The next morning I got him in the car again and we went straight to the vet. Again, it was as if I was carrying a dead weight. The mass didn't move, didn't react, didn't do nothing. He was lifted and carried and placed there and it felt that if we had left him there for hours or even days, he would have stayed in the same position. Probably the only position he was capable of assuming. As we waited, people would go in and out of the clinic asking, what is that? And where's the head? And what's that smell? I'd like to say that by then I had developed some feelings for that dog that I had kept in my house overnight, but I hadn't. I couldn't. One can't. There was nothing there for anyone to feel anything for. And that's probably the saddest thing of all. Not the smell, not the neglect, not the dirt or the matted hair. No, the saddest thing is not being recognized as someone that can excite an emotion. Or even just feeling, any feeling other than disgust. At some point we took him inside with a combination of excitement to finally see the dog that was hiding underneath and the fear that what he had coming was not going to be easy and that he wasn't going to let us do whatever it was we had to do to relieve him. Nothing was more difficult than to distinguish any character in that mass or guess what to expect. He had reacted a couple of times at being handled and touched, so we guessed that we would have to put him under anesthesia, but he proved us wrong. And once the machine started going, he stood still and would not move for the next five hours. That's how long it took to reveal the dog underneath. We started with the head. That only took 45 minutes to an hour. Thank you.
So, he had a face. <laughs> there was a dog's face under all that. And once he was revealed, we verified what we had already guessed. He was a poodle. Just as he had remained completely still and silent during the grooming of his head, he remained just as still and just as silent for the next four hours as we were slowly freeing his body of that matted dirt armor he had been carrying for maybe months. There were parts of his body that were very difficult to shave and parts that were easier and he just stood there for hours as if he was one of those poodles in the dog shows that seem to have accepted all that is part of who they are. The dog we were shaving had nothing to do with the dog we had rescued. The dog we had rescued seemed fussy and antisocial. The dog we were shaving seemed like a dog who knows that trust in humans is something that comes with the reality of being a dog. So after the dog underneath was revealed as a body, the next step was to reveal the dog underneath as a personality. But first, I have to say, it was very fulfilling to be able to finally hug him and pet him and spoil him. From months of dragging the dreads around his paws, he had almost forgotten how to walk. With every step he'd make, he would lift each one of his hind legs as if something was still blocking his walking properly. That muscle memory started subsiding as he was becoming less of his old self and more of the new one and as his fur started growing back all white, clean and curly we were slowly forgetting who he used to be when we first met him. We named him Julian and Julian is an elderly dog half deaf with poor eyesight and a heart condition and he's not perfect nor imperfect Really, he is just himself. As his hair is growing back and as he is gaining confidence, he is developing a personality that is difficult to ignore. He is so much himself that any intervention on who he is seems wrong. We just let him be. We let him mark everywhere and make the territory his own. We let him sleep where he wants and when he wants we let him try to steal food and chase around all the newcomers trying to boss them. We dress him up, we watch him be, and we watch him play, or not. <laughs> There's always an expectation when it comes to rescuing dogs that have been found in such terrible condition. It's mainly subconscious, I think, but it is there. We want to see a 180 degree change from very, very bad to very, very good. Now, this doesn't always happen, and it's not supposed to. What's supposed to happen is to help any rescue animal live their best life according to who they truly are, not according to who we imagine them to be. And we do need to train ourselves to enjoy that rapture in the end as a real life kind of story, not as a fairy tale one. Underneath the matted fur of every rescue hides an animal that is always unique. Some may fit into a Hollywood type of happily ever after narrative and some may not, and that's okay. It's okay for Julian to be imperfect, to be Julian, to bite sometimes, to not act as if he's thankful or grateful or aware of the endless meanings about life surrounding his transformation. No, it's just okay for him to be himself. <laughs> 